God, he's going way down. It is a wild one. I'm on again. I'm on again. Wow, what a shiny one. Oh no, I see a fin. No, I don't. What is it? Oh, dang it. Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? I have some exciting news. Today, immediately following this episode at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the spring merch drop is live. As you can see, we got a smorgasbord of stuff here on the table. I'm gonna go over everything at the end of this episode. So if you wanna stay till the end and you wanna get a sneak peek of every single item that's in the drop, you can do that. If not, just be on the website, 7 p.m. Don't miss out on some of these limited items and we'll see you guys on the river. Starting the year off with a little bit of stink. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. The water's prime, the day is fine. I'm Dr. Seuss because I rhyme. Most whatever, let's go fishing. That's it. That's the spot, right? Come on. Oh, there he is, I got him. Yep, fish on, fish on. Yep. <laughs> yeah! Come on, stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Oh no, he's not staying here. He's not staying here. Oh, maybe he is. I'm gonna get my tip down low. Yeah, oh, I got him. I walked him in there. We got him. We got him. Oh, God, he's gonna yank me in. This is our fish. This is our, I don't even want to call him the L word yet. That will instantly either materialize an adipose fin and or make it come off. Can't say the L word yet. Stay here. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to land him down there in the fast stuff. Yep, I'm gonna have to. Oh boy. Stay right there. Little, don't do that, don't do that, little. That's a big one. That's a real nice one, always kicking my butt. You tell him, little, you tell him. Oh God, he's going way down. Yep, I'm gonna have to take him the rest of the way. Live action. I think we can get him here. I'm gonna surf him behind this rock. Got this rock out in front of me, and I'm gonna surf him. Okay, here it goes. Oh, that's a good one. It's a wild one, though. It is a wild one. Okay, there she is. She's tired. Look at that fish. Look at that fish! Look at how gorgeous she is. She's got character, she's got charisma. She's a beaut. Good boy, you giving him a kiss. Good boy. Look at that. Advantage bead hook by Mustad and Addicted in the corner of the mouth. Held on through a crazy fight. One more look at perfection before she goes. Later, honey. Bye bye. Yeah. That was a cool fish. I shouldn't have said the L word. I didn't even say the whole word and it turned into a wild fish. Let's go find another one. Okay, so a little tip and trick I usually do with my pre-rig beads is put them in a Ziploc bag. That way these things aren't like scraping around in the in the bag. These new addicted bags are super badass, but that way the line's not getting naked in different spots uh, and having any abrasions caused to it while I'm moving down the river or pulling this in and out of the bag because I usually don't like to pre-tie a ton of new leaders uh, before I go. I like to just kind of use exactly what I'm going to use uh, given that day and given the conditions. That way I don't waste a lot of beads and waste a lot of time and effort re-rigging everything. So i got the normal bead set up with the glass bead all the way up to my baba. Already broke off once. Finding all the new trees in the river this year. It's just the way she goes. Okay, let's go fishing. There he is. Oh, I'm on again. I can't even speak. I'm on again. I'm on again. It is on like Donkey Kong. This one looks a little more the right shape. Wow, what a shiny one. Shiny, shiny things. Shiny things, little. What is it? I'm gonna check first before I bring them up. It's one sure thing to do, you guys. If you don't exactly know that it's a hatchery fish, I think it's always best to make sure to leave that fish in front of you, even if you're excited. Oh no, I see a fin. No, I don't. What is it? No, that's a hatchery. <laughs> yeah! In the perfect size, perfect style. We got lunch. Heck to the yeah. What a perfect little button of a steelhead. Fresh fish too, I mean, God, I'd almost mistake it for a summer. It doesn't look like it has many eggs and I think this is a nice little buck. This one, I think is a little, little eater nonetheless. She's going over a fire.
caught some fish on this one already. Looks a little worn out, but I'm using the 12 pound tough line. I'm giving her a good pull. I think we're good. That dog will hunt. Okay, here it goes. Here it goes. Okay, I'm gonna restink. I'm gonna go get on my rock. I'm gonna go get up here on my pedestal. Okay, I'm Babe Ruthing it. Babe Ruthing it. First cast. Okay, right there. Three, two, one, 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 one. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, one. Ooh, big talker. Not showing up. Dude bluffed. It's okay. Second cast. Second cast, I'm calling it. One of those days. No one home. Okay. I'm all right then. Okay. Let's try one on the inside. Well, it's like old Ronnie used to always say, if you don't get him in four casts, try a spinner. You guys are probably thinking, who the hell is Ronnie? Okay, I'm gonna grab my spinner here. I find sometimes when you don't find fish on the beat on the first couple of casts, you know, I can already tell today, the first few casts we've made through the runs, we've been getting the fish. So they're aggressive, they're fresh, but still, sometimes in this heavier water like this, a spinner rules king. And all I know is I haven't caught one yet on the spinner, so let's go grab a spinner. Okay, I'm going to the spinner rod. What I'm using here, probably my favorite rod for fishing spinners this time of year is the nine foot eight to 17 Guide Select Pro. It's really nice for when you have to cast far like this. It's got a great sensitive tip. I got a 30 pound line on here and a 15 pound bumper, but I can tell my bumper's too short. It's only about four feet long. I don't think it'll matter that much today, but really it comes down to fishability. When you have a really short bumper on your spinner, that addicted enforcer braided line flows a lot. So even in the 30 pound like I'm using, it'll float up and I'll only really get this much sink. So I'm gonna cut this off and start fresh because this is still on here from coho season before I left for chili. So very Jordan-esque, if you will. Gonna tie a bread knot. Still not long enough, but Los whatever's, we're fishing. Look what I pulled out of my little bag of tricks. This was the spinner we did on one of our limited drops. If you guys don't know about our limited drops, they happen often on the Addicted Dot Fishing website. And usually we announce them in these videos that you're watching here right now. So, got a little R&B custom. One of my favorite colors for winter steelhead, black and white silver. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna start a little closer, work my way out, especially in a boulder garden like this. I wanna be covering every little angle that I can. You'll notice in spots like this, there's probably 10 or 12 different rocks out there, you know, theoretically that those fish can sit behind. So if you just bomb the cast to the same spot each and every time, you're really underfishing a spinner. So I'm gonna start a little bit higher on the run. I'm gonna work my way down, going a little bit farther each cast because I am kind of stuck on this island. But right there should be the spot. Hit the rock, little dunk, dunk, dunk. Okay, one more far one. I feel like we need to do a far one. Yep. Okay, there's one more spot I wanna hit here before we move on. But it's good to thoroughly fish, it feels good. I don't think I'd have slept very good tonight if I didn't throw a spinner through here. That's kinda how I feel about spinners. Right there, come on, I can feel him. He's sniffing it. Okay, last cast. Can we do it? Last cast, everyone. And moving on. Okay, do the next hole, but I noticed that my low spinner is low stole, or the hook rather. These are the two aught mustache. This might be a three mustad side wash, but, but it's very important when spinner fishing or any fishing, honestly, to have a file with you to be able to sharpen because that is a lot of times what stands in between you hooking and losing a fish or hooking and landing it is having that sharp hook to penetrate. 
All I do really is I keep this one angle, I kind of sharpen the bottom side of the hook flat and you can get a really nice point back on there. See that it's getting shiny. Maybe you can't, all I can see is rust from my from my grinder here, but most whatever. What was that? Oh, that was fishy. Fishy things are happening out here. Fishy things are happening. Sharp. Okay, here we go. Got a lot different style of water than we were just fishing here. A little bit more of like an inside back eddy, slow current, but still, in my opinion, a really good spot to throw a spinner. But this is like your quintessential water where you're gonna wanna use these torpedo body style of spinners. Anything like a, a bell body or a blue fox is not gonna fish that good in a spot like this because it's not, not gonna be getting down. So I want something that cuts through the current, sinks down to the bottom, gets down quickly and then I can work through slowly with my reel rather than relying on the, the currents of the water and the upwellings and stuff to carry that spinner. So it's kind of warming up this morning too. So I feel like this is gonna be a good situation for spinners the rest of the day. Got high moving water right there. Come on, baby. Ooh. And this is kind of going against my close middle far. A lot of the times when I'm doing the close middle far thing is in a nice spread out run. But here I have a really distinct current line and I don't want to go any further really past middle of the river. So I'm just going to stick with the same cast every time and use my feet for coverage. I'm going to make the same distance cast about 30 feet out, hit the edge of that pool and work it. And every two or three steps I take after every cast, you see how far I am away from you guys already from the main camera. I'm going to make the same cast every time, same distance. That way I have that nice grid pattern going across this inside of this tail out. And then I'm confident that it wasn't a fish there when I leave. So that's the best part about it is you can sleep good at night knowing you effectively fished. Because us steelhead fishermen are crazy. Okay, this is the cast right here. I'm gonna let that thing hit bottom. Thump, thump, I'm gonna tighten my line, start it spinning. Go! Oh, dang it! Oh, did you guys see that? Oh, almost got the rod yanked out of my hand. Instant replay. Go! Okay, one more inside cast and we're out of here. All right, the quest for the spinnerfish continues. Kind of blew that one. Actually, I didn't blow that one. I think the biggest thing a lot of people do wrong is they set the hook when they get a spinner bite and I didn't set the hook. That fish just didn't quite get the hook. It was in really fast water, so he grabbed that thing, probably got the top of the spinner and not the hook. But um, nonetheless, I think we might find one in a different hole. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important news announcement. I need you to stop what you are doing and listen. I'm gonna try to fish a center pin. What the f just happened? So it started by cutting the line off. This is going well. It does remind me of fly fishing. <laughs> Back at it. Start one thing at a time. Let's start. Oh, I'm already recording. I'm having a hard time, but everybody having a hard time. Okay, here it goes. What are they even talking about? This is hard. There he is. Oh my God. Had to be. Just had to be. Well, enough of this nonsense. I'm going back to the spinner. Okay, not happening. Good thing I have one more trick up my sleeve. I always say, one of my favorite things about salmon and steelhead fishing is how versatile you can be. My favorite days are when you catch fish on everything. So I've had a bite on a spinner. I got one on the bead. It's time to go try something else. One of my favorite ways to catch them. Okay, it's time for low spay. It has been a while, everybody since I got my spay rod in my hand. And I honestly have to say, like I said just a second ago about being versatile out here on the river, there's holes that I know fish a fly well and those are the holes I fish flies in. I won't call myself a fly fisherman or a gear fisherman, I'm a fisherman. I like to use everything that there is to use because they're all worth experiencing and it's a lot of fun to catch a fish on the fly rod. So I brought my fly rod up today. We have a perfect fly run with this level of water, but I'm gonna talk really quick about some of my flies. This is the dark and stormy, dark and stormy world. 
world, dark and stormy. One of my favorite flies, but it's not quite dark and stormy weather. So that's not just a clever name. But I think what we're gonna do today is go with the sexy ginger. I think we need to use the sexy ginger. Take a look at that fly box. Good range of colors, some bright stuff for dirty water, some dark stuff for clear water, and the sexy ginger for today. Let me show you how I did this. So I tie these flies by myself with um, some different styles of tying materials, but the main thing that I'm doing to my fly here, which is kind of crazy if you're a fly tire and fly angler, is I've tied on a, an old hook shank. That's how I tied my flies. I actually took a long hook, I cut it off at the end, bent it straight, and tied my fly to it. Put a nice little bead at the top of it, kind of the best of both worlds here. But one thing that I really did that's unique is I now, because I left that long shank, added a piece of hollow core pencil lead to the end of it. So I'm adding and subtracting weight from my fly, which is pretty cool. It's not really something you can usually do with a fly setup. There are a couple of times where you can, but this is particularly cool for me because I'm in a fast river. I got some deep water I wanna fish. I added about a quarter ounce of weight to the end of my fly. Now let's go fish it. That'll do it. Winter chrome blend to the head. The water soluble works really good on this stuff too. I usually don't ever fly fish without adding a little bit of scent to my fly, especially because it's that swung presentation. I just do it on the head. Don't touch it on the feathers or else it'll start getting those all greasy, but <clears throat> time to fish. Ah, oh, so greasy. The greasiest tail out this side of the Mississippi. Uh, greasier than a T-bone steak. I smell like beef. cast. I'm going to show you guys one of my very favorite recipes in the world. Uh, probably one of the oldest recipes in the world for cooking a salmon, but with a very sneak peek on a new twist to it, I guess you can say. A lot of adjectives there. But nonetheless, we're going to be doing a really cool catch and cook here. And also, we're going to take a little sneak peek at what's inside my bag. My bag is fully plump and ready to go. Um, and I think it'll be cool for you guys to be able to see it and see a couple of the little things that I have in there and the way that I pack stuff uh, to kind of keep stuff dry and get you through the winter season without ruining all your gear. So coming up next. All right, time to make some lunch. And the way we're gonna cook this fish, it's one of the oldest in the book. We're gonna do it over the fire on a little cedar board. Uh, just like the Native Americans have done in this area for thousands and thousands of years. So there's a special way they have to play this, so we're going to butterfly this fish open, which is not easy. This is probably my second or third time doing this, so bear with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut, and I'm going to go right down the spine here. I'm going to try to keep all that meat intact, because the difference in what I'm doing here is I'm going to keep the belly meat intact. I'm not going to make that initial cut, up from like the butthole all the way up to the gills and take the guts out, I'm gonna keep this belly intact and then basically take the flay off of each side. Best way to do this part, I feel like. Let's go right through. Pretty good start. I'm gonna leave that just like that. Got some fresh eggies. Not bad, I'm gonna get to make some new baits with these. Those are perfect. Make that same cut. Put my knife down the back. Like that. No meat left. Honestly, I'm pretty proud of myself. Pretty nice. Looking pretty good. A little sad I missed some of the meat right here, but. Well, it's whatever, so it all comes out the same. Maybe only lost a couple of bites, but that looks pretty good. Time to bust out the cedar steak, get this thing going. All right, it is time to feast. 
We got our fire going somehow. It took us a couple minutes, but wet wood does burn, if you wanna know. So what we're using today for this, which is kind of unconventional for this recipe, normally you just do the fish over the fire with the alder smoke, traditionally kind of like the Native American way. Uh, but we're gonna tease out our little blackened seasoning here at Addicted. There's the hippie cowboy, there's blackened, there's animal style, and then there's another surprise one that you're gonna see in a video coming up here. So nice part about blackened seasoning is it doesn't really have too much salt in it. So I'm gonna go fairly heavy. It's steelhead, it's not a springer or anything like that. So I'm gonna utilize the seasonings that I have here. Rub it around all nice and deep black. Oh, that looks lovely. My next step, I'm gonna make two small incisions in the tail here. And that's where my first uh, cedar bowel is gonna go. It's really important to have your cedar sticks be pretty much exactly the same size. So I took some time, used the hatchet, and got them all relatively the same diameter. Because if you don't have that, as you apply the pressure with the cedar stick here, it'll hold different at each spot and ultimately not hold the fish properly and it'll start falling around and be a big pain in your butt, so. I'll slide this bad boy up here. And it is very important, again, to get this as far down in this cedar stick as you can. Uh, so that you get a tight hold and so it's as close to the fire as you can possibly get. And you have to alternate these sticks now as you go down the fish. So I got one through the tails, one through the back. Next one is going to go over the front side here. There we go. I'm going to try and even this thing out just a little bit. Make sure we look good because that is rule number one with cooking and in life. That'll look good, everyone. Now that everything is in place, I'm gonna take my other wire. There we go. She's ready to go on the fire. Got some good heat going. Nice little smoke hitting the fish. It's time to relax for a little bit. I promised you guys while the fish was cooking, I was gonna show you what's in the bag. So here it is. I'm gonna just start with each thing um, as I pull it out and, and show you guys this is, you know, I'm not fully, fully ready. I just got back from Chile about a week ago. So, but I was gonna fish the next couple days. I figured I'd pull everything out, get everything ready and show you guys exactly how I set up for the season. So I like to keep a lot of my stuff in Ziploc bags. Um, unlike this here, especially the stuff that's on leaderboards. Like I got my jigs on a leaderboard. I got my addicted jigs, got a couple of random ones that nice guy at the sportsman show gave me um, and i got my leaderboard of beads and so what i like to stick them in i got a couple extra straggler beads there just because they look nice uh, but i like to keep them inside a ziploc bag this kind of stuff that way they're not getting abrased by anything going in and out of my bag i'm not messing up those leaders next bag i got my leaders um, leader line and all my bobbers in one bag so pretty prepared there they're not floating all around getting smashed up i actually even got some more dave tangle free weights in there too kind of keep it all organized Next is my terminal tackle box. I got three different styles of split shot. I got bobber stop beads. I got my hooks and I got, um, you know, some extra two watt side wash for my spinners and my bobber stops and glass beads. So basically I, I like to try to pack my stuff up. I kind of like how I'm going to set up. If I'm going to set up, I need all three of these things at the same time. So I don't want each one of these things in something different. It's annoying to have to open and close them. Next is the big bad box of spinners the BBBS. Got pretty much every color. Got a lot of our limited drop ones. I got some bell bodies. I got Spoony Love. I got some spoons in there. Um, got some nice North Fork Lure Customs. Uh, all in all, you can kind of see just about three or four different colors. Not a crazy, crazy amount of colors, but a lot of spinners. Lots of spinners. Next is my soft bead stuff. So I got my Addicted Soft Bead Pack in there. I got um, and then some 20 mils different colors of pinks that's kind of my soft bead setup so i don't use these a ton i like my hard beads more and that is what's coming out of the box next i got my hard bead box again three or four different colors got some soft beads in there a couple more glass beads next is my big bag of bloody worms lots of worms all of our addicted styles I mean, literally one of each color i think is very important when you're doing any sort of worm fishing to have that variety of colors that you can switch back and forth too quickly given condition changes Next, I have a couple jars of my anise eggs, my addicted anise eggs. Um, these ones don't come with anise on them, you have to add it, but these are my 
addicted soft eggs, the little jars that we sell on the website. Then, very last thing is a chunk of pencil lead. It's nice because you can kind of put this on everything. It's easy to go back and forth to. I just I crimp this down, pinch or uh, punch a hole through it, and uh, that's it. That's what's in the bag. The saliva is dripping out of my mouth like the fat's dripping off the fish. What do you think, little? Eh, she doesn't think much about it. I think it's time to try a little piece, though. So I can tell the skin start. Oh my God! Come here, everybody! Come here. Would you just have a look at that? That one's mine. Oh, it's done perfectly too. Wow, that blackened seasoning with the smoke from the fire is unbelievable. Again, not your typical <clears throat> avenue for a blackened seasoning. Normally you'd pan fry a fish with the blackened seasoning, but with that little bit of smoke, tiny bit of char from the fire. Holy goodness, that's good. Look at that fat dripping. Here, here, you, you earn this. Go ahead, let's get you a piece of skin. Here you go, kid. Good boy. The fat's starting to come out up here. We got all this juice dripping down. Top of the tail may not be quite done yet, but you know what, that's okay. It's time to eat. Just have a look at it. Just look at that. Okay, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going right for my favorite piece, upper belly. Nice little smoke crisp on the edge of that. There's nothing like cooking a fish over the fire, especially on a cedar. Mm. If you haven't tried it, blacken a piece of steelhead, throw it on your smoker, or build a fire in the backyard, cut yourself some wood, and make you some steelhead. Holy crap, that's good. Wow. Oh, a little hot, huh? Sorry. What a valiant effort and successful day that it really was. We fished all our favorite methods. We caught fish on our first outing of the year, everybody. And I thank you so much for being here along for the journey. I hope you like that cook too. Be on the lookout for these seasonings coming out within the next couple of months. We're working on packaging right now. These things are gonna be amazing and I can't wait to get them to you guys. Until next time, everybody, you all stay fishy. We'll see you out there. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that episode. I know I was drooling when Jordan was cooking that steelhead over the fire. It looked freaking delicious. But let's do a little sneak peek here of everything in the drop. We're gonna start at the apparel. So like I said, guys, in a few promos, if you guys have seen it, this is gonna be the largest hat drop we've ever done. I think there's over 100 new hat styles from flat bills to flex fix to everything. So as you can see, we got a bunch of really cool ones here. We do have ones with the backs that don't have the holes in them. If you like that, it's still a snapback. Flex fits, just an insane amount of cool new styles. That one's one of my favorite. We got the steel head on there. We got the camo. Flat bills, for all the people that like to wear flat bills, we got some bunch of cool new styles of flat bill hats. Brought some addicted hunting stuff back. Even this one that I'm wearing is one of the new ones. Got some new drinkware. We got the Stay Fishy Campfire Mug. These have always been a hit with you guys over the years. Obviously there's a lot of coffee drinkers out there that like to fish. So these are awesome little Stay Fishy mugs. Tons of new tumblers, which are all made by Mr. Loho Clint himself. This one's pretty cool. We got the Drink Some, Sink Some. Then we got the one that my wife came up with, fish around and find out, which I think is pretty damn catchy and cool. All of them have addicted as well on there. We got kind of a light pink purplish one, drink some, sink some. These ones turned out so sick. As you guys know, the Stanley Cup has been just insanely popular in the, in the world lately. And so we kind of did our own version of it. Pretty dope. This is one of the new logos that was exclusive at the Sportsman Show and the Spring Drop. I love how that thing turned out. We got them in white and black. And then we got the water bottles. They got a nice little straw on them. Addicts Nation, great little water bottle. Tons of apparel, guys. So we're doing some new bait towels again. You guys, the bait towels are always a hit. Everyone's putting them in their boats, backpacks, wherever. So we got some cool bait towels. We had to get the Sasquatch one going. Got the Sasquatchy. Then we got just a blue one with a cool little Addicted America down there. Just the clean blue. So guys, all these t-shirts, everything should be available in small through like 3XL. So this is like a heathered blue, turned out really sick. And we got the Sasquatch shirt, another dope one. And again, these are all small guys, these are extra small. So some of the sizes are gonna be extra small to 3XL. Some of them will go to 4XL. It just depends on the, the blank. We got the Chinook, 
the dicted on the back right there. And then my all time favorite from this drop, we got Mr. Winter Steelhead. He's got his beanie on, he's rocking, ready to go catch some fish. That one turned out sick. The Fish Mountain, this has been a popular one with you guys over the years, so we've been just kind of changing it, doing different colors with it. I really like this one with the gray. It's got the white moon on there. Turned out pretty dope. And then we just did a straight up black, addicted with an addicted orange on there. We got the Stealth Hoodie. Again, another really popular one with you guys, the Stealth Camo Hoodie. So we did this one in the black. It's got the red hook. This is super high quality. These are all 10 ounce hoodies, guys. Really warm, really comfortable. 80-20 blend, so they don't shrink a ton. We got the Mr. Winter Steelhead on this one as well. This is by our friend Matt Renner. Drew this out of Colorado. Super dope. This was a hit at the Sportsman Show. This is kind of like a lightish blue, lightish green. I don't know if you'd call it like a seafoam color, but unisex, all men and women love these at the show. Again, just sticking with the Fish Mountain theme. We had to bring some more Addicted Hunting back. You guys have been loving all the Addicted Hunting stuff. So we got the camo with the new Addicted Hunting logo on there. And then, we got another fish mountain. This one's more kind of like in an army green with a yellow moon. Again, it's really cool, clean looking and sticking with the theme of high quality apparel, guys. Everything that we do is printed on high quality apparel. We stand by it, we trust it, we like it, doesn't shrink a lot. We had to bring another jacket. These pullover quarter zip jackets you guys have really, really loved. So we brought this one back. These are 100% nylon, 100% waterproof. So they're pretty badass. And then we got the addicted flag on the back. We got another Stay Fishy hoodie. This one's in gray. Another really big hit at the Sportsman Show, guys. So if you guys weren't able to get to the Sportsman Shows, hope you'll be able to get some of these on the website before they sell out. It turned out really, really good. Now, let's get to the tackle. So that is not all the apparel, guys. That's not all the apparel, and that's not all the hats. There is an endless amount. So again, 7 p.m. Pacific. You better mark your calendars before stuff sells out. We got brand new 360 Addicted Flashers. We did these in chartreuse and green before. They were huge hits and major fish killers. So now we've rolled out a blue Aurora and an orange Aurora. They have this pattern on the front and then they're just all chrome on the back with the short bus logo. Pretty sick. And then we got Mr. Popoff's, one of Mr. Popoff's customs. Tested this at Bowie 10, tested it for Springers. Just an amazing flasher fish catching machine. Again, another limited collab with short bus. We got some new limited worms here with DRO. So we went with the black one with the white tail and it's got some red flake in it. Just a low water or high water killer. Black over the last few years we've noticed has just done really, really well. So we got the steel grave, we called it. We got the smoke show. It's funny at the shows, a lot of bass guys were buying these as well to drop shot them. So if you're a bass guy out there, we didn't make them for bass, but if you're thinking bass, there was a lot of other guys that were as well. We got a couple more here. This one's gotta be one of my favorite. The way that thing turned out is amazing. Peaches and cream. Then we got the red and blue with the blue core shot, as you can see there. Gonna be an absolute killer, the Patriot. Those are all collabs with Mr. Dylan Rush Outfitters. We got Ruby Ice, Pink Sherbert, and Orange Halo. These are all incognito clusters, guys. Collaboration with Lured Beads. You're gonna get 221 mil, 217 mil, and 413 mil. Again, big, big hit at the Sportsman Show. These are limited. We're gonna have them on the website. We may end up keeping these on the website and selling them, but we don't know yet. So right now they're limited. Get them while you can. We had to do another collab with Mad River. As you guys know, Mad River manufactures a lot of our worms. We've worked with him over the years, many, many years, going back probably 10 years now working with Mad River, an amazing partner of ours. So we came out with a bubblegum pink black tail. So bubblegum pink is just obviously like a standby when it comes to steelhead fishing for winter steelhead. Probably one of the first worm colors that was ever really invented for salmon and steelhead. So we threw a black tail on there. Fish catching machine. Okay, we collabed on this one, guys, with Mr. Randy Bonner. Randall Bonner, author of the Bead Fishing Bible. So he pre-tied all these leaders with his hands. We got our Addicted Advantage bead hooks on there. We are using 12 pound high quality fluorocarbon and these are all custom beads from Mr. DRO. So these are custom limited drop beads only available on these leaderboards. These are pretty sick, really nice to have. Throw them in your backpack. You don't have to worry about rigging, tying anything. You just tie it right onto your line and go catch some fish. We got some new bats, some new fish, fish bonkers. We got the Addicted Slugger, super badass. And then we have new weighted 
bonkers, guys. So these are actually drilled out. Lead is inserted into the center of these. And so they are nice and heavy. And the nice thing I love about these is with the sides like this, they don't roll around. They won't roll around in your boat. They won't roll around the drift boat, whatever you have. Just a cool concept. We got some trailer hitch covers. A lot of guys have been asking for those. So we added them. Got some trailer hitch covers for you. Got some addicted playing cards. These turned out pretty dope. Everyone, we know there's a lot of poker fans out there and guys that just like to play cards when you're in the hotel or whatever fishing. So we got some addicts ones for you. Last but not least, guys, we got a whole bunch of custom Y code limited edition addicted maglips. So we got both of these guys right here. As you can see, all these were designed by Mr. Popoff himself. Again, these all will be limited. Jason Harmson, you guys know Mr. Luigi's Guide Service. He designed this one as well. We got the blue top, silver on the bottom. He's already caught a bunch of fish on it this year. It's gonna be a steelhead killer. As you guys know, Dr. Death, just, a, just an amazing plug over the years. And so we just did a little variation of the Dr. Death. It's got black splatter all over the pink, just to give him something a little bit different. Red and black, cannot go wrong with red and black guys in low water especially. Great plug. And then we got red top, blue bill, blue and silver bottom. It's got all the colors and it's got all the fish catching ability. So there you have it folks. There's a little sneak peek. This is not everything in the drop. Like I said, make sure you're on the website, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tonight. You guys can have access to all this limited stuff and a bunch of new stuff that we did not sneak peek here. So we appreciate the support so much, guys. We would not be able to do what we've done or be able to grow this brand or build this community without all you addicts that continue to support us, support our drops, support our content and our videos. We're gonna keep making cool videos and keep making content and educational stuff for all you addicts out there. We got some really cool stuff planned for this year. So I can't wait to continue the journey with you all. Again, like I said, appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you on the website in just a few minutes.